Hi, and welcome to this Codon Developers Update. This is version 070, and in this video I'm going to take you through some of the changes and some of the things that you might want to look out for when you're trying out the new beta. First off, we've changed the environments. They are new. It's because the old environments did not fit the lighting scheme with the new tone mapper that we're using. You can change the environments in here, between the gray, studio, forest, abyss, and the sunset. Uh, the gray is the most neutral one. I like the studio. I like the forest. These are a bit extreme lighting situations, the abyss and the sunset, but feel free to try them out and see which one you like the best. I definitely like uh, studio and forest the best. So I'm going to go back to the start menu and I'm going to take you through the features because so much have changed, so much things keep changing that I really don't remember all the things that have changed from uh, one version to the other. So I'm just going to take you through the features, talk about how they are, and I'll take it from there. From the main menu, you can load your uh, old sculptures. You can import OBJs. However, this is a very unstable feature. Sometimes it crashes. Sometimes you get incomplete meshes. So be aware of loading OBJs. You can load your refer reference images here and your old models. You can also start an empty sculpture or you can start with a low poly mesh. Now the low poly mesh thing is a new feature that we've added which allows you to manipulate this cube via its vertices points. You can even add more points by clicking on these, uh, the subdivide uh, tool and then clicking on the points themselves. And then you can go back into point and you can adjust them, you know, to m maybe create an interesting shape that you like. When you're done and you want to sculpt on it, you can click solidify, uh, which will turn it into a voxel mesh, which I can sculpt on with my old sculpting tools. Now since we've already had a sculpture here, we don't have to add another sculpture. We can just go back into the sculpting tools and I can talk about some of the new ones that we've added. First off, we have our old uh, trusty free draw mode. You can just draw freely in the air with it. You don't have to be on a surface. You can create all kinds of shapes with it. The square brush is the same, only it's square. It's a bit rugged, but uh, we also have a smooth brush, which you can use to smooth out what you've sculpted with the square brush to make interesting shapes. It's also good for carving by holding down the alternative button and carving away. We have added a move brush. Now the move brush is experimental. Well, experimental. We're going to have a move brush, but it's uh, definitely a work in progress. And um, the reason for that is that it has some problems with uh, its speed. It's a bit slow. When you move, there's a little bit of a processing delay. It lags a little bit while you're waiting for that. Um, so you have to be careful with the move. With the move brush. Yeah. Um, the move also sometimes creates holes inside your mesh. And you, um, you might get some color issues. And if that's the case, you can go here to the panel on the right, which is the new t uh, tool panel that we have for some of the tools, and you can fill your uh, object with the current color. Um, erase is just the erase, the regular erase, there's nothing new about it. It's used to erase the mesh. Trim is a new brush that we're working on. It's very like under development, so don't expect this one to do you any favors right now. Uh, try it out for sure. Tell us uh, how you think it might be better, because we certainly don't think it's uh, uh, any great at the moment. But uh, any kind of input is always cool. The same with the crease brush. You can uh, use it and try it. It's a bit better, in my opinion, than the uh, than the trim brush. You know, considering where it's at in development, but it certainly has its issues. It does some overlapping things, so you get this like uh, knocking, 
like a like a little uh, stepping inside the crease, which can be annoying. Um, and finally, there's the clay brush, which is for those that have been in the beta, they've seen it. It's kind of like a build-up brush. It'll uh, work with the surface that you already have. So if you have nothing, don't use the clay brush. It won't add anything in the air. It'll just kind of work with the surface and you can erase and add. It's very smooth. It's based on the same algorithm as the smooth brush. So it works similarly to the smooth brush. Uh, now uh, for the scene menu, like if you have a creature, for example, and you want him to have eyes, you might want to add an eyeball. And there you can do by adding an extra objects. In the scene menu you can have uh, almost as many objects as you want. And they are separate objects so they won't interact. So if I'm working on this one now, I'm not like erasing this uh, other one that's underneath it. Which uh, is very useful for uh, making multiple uh, like body parts or something. If you're working on a character, you can get pretty high poly eventually. If you split your character into multiple uh, objects, you can hide different objects by clicking on the hide button. And that way you can still work on pieces of your model without having to uh, deal with too much lag and stuff. Other than that, the symmetry option is here. The radial symmetry stuff is uh, not in here just yet. It's uh, It'll be there. Obviously, we're not taking it out. It just didn't fit in the menu uh, before we had to push out the beta. Uh, there are some other options here, which are in the settings menu. You know, you have your square platform. This one is uh, quite important. This one sets the angle at which this pen pointer is at. So I like it in the middle which is 45 degrees. You can set the length. Right now is it the almost the minimum length which means I have to almost touch the menu before it to show up. If you set it quite long you can interact with the menu from quite a long distance away. So that's a personal preference setting that you can set. Menu follow speed. It's uh, You can see there's like a little delay on the menu oh, as to where it moves with my uh, hand. This is to remove like wiggle. So let's say I'm over here and I want to do some settings here. There might be a lot of wiggle. So if I if I turn my speed down a little bit, you can see it follows a lot slower. Now, I wouldn't turn it all the way down, then it gets <laughs> becomes kind of like a game. It's it's kind of funny where it, it'll just it'll try to follow around your left your left hand. Yeah. Um, I certainly like it at its at its maximum. Where there's a little bit of help, but it's not too much uh, of a help there. Uh, the other ones are the monitor camera, which is the one I'm using to make the head move my head movements a bit more uh, smooth. Um, but you can also place it inside the your workspace and record yourself working uh, via the display on the computer. So if you have um, if you want to record yourself working on a model, but not from a first-person perspective, you can definitely set up the camera from a distance and have it look at you while you're recording. However, this does cost more performance because you're rendering three screens instead of two. Like there's there's two screens basically rendering inside your um, inside your head-mounted display, and then there would be another one rendered for the for the desktop screen. So be wary of that. Now the resolution uh, thing is probably the last thing I'm going to talk about. You can use it to scale your model down in resolution, so I can remove detail basically. This is almost half, so this means that it go from 200,000 down to a, about 100,000. And you can see it, it gets a bit rough when you do that. And it's not perfect yet, you get some artifacts when you use it, but it's certainly a way to... Uh, rescale your model and you can go higher see now up to 300,000 now you gotta be careful with it because if you already have a high resolution model and you multiply it by a lot more you can get a so high a resolution model that either your system crashes or it can't process the update so yeah other than that everything should be great 
I hope you guys uh, learned something or at least some questions were answered uh, via this uh, developers update. If you have any questions you can leave it in the comment section below. Ask them on Facebook or the Steam forums. And other than that have a good one. Enjoy the uh, the new update.